Well, let's move to today's headlines right now. So take Israel. Sharon is a man of peace, as the president just described him. Uh, despite an impressive record of terrorist atrocities, includes large-scale massacres of defenseless civilians back in the early 1950s, a uh, brutal expulsion of thousands of Bedouins 20 years later under the labor government, destroying their lands, mosques, cemeteries, driving them into the desert uh, to clear northeast Sinai for Jewish settlement, the background for the 1973 war, and including, of course, the 1982 war fought in Lebanon, killing 20,000 people uh, in order to secure uh, Israeli control over the occupied territories and other atrocities, all of them international terrorism, uh, because they rely crucially on U.S. support since the 1970s. And the last few weeks, horrible as they are, are nothing all that new. I personally saw similar things firsthand uh, in the West Bank uh, during the first Intifada, 1988. Uh, in this attack, the uh, most ferocious and destructive weapons that destroyed the Janine refugee camp and the ancient uh, Kasbah, the old city in Nablus, uh, in ways reminiscent of the Taliban, if you look closely. Uh, the most ferocious uh, weapons were U.S. helicopters supplied in the full knowledge that they're going to be used for those purposes. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's a pretty ugly story. It bears retelling, it involves Clinton I'll come, and the U.S. media, including our, ours right here. Uh, I'll come back to it if you like. Uh, furthermore, the U.S. government remains active right now in uh, enhancing terror there, I'm borrowing the president's words. So in December, last December, uh, the Security Council uh, debated a resolution calling for the implementation of the Mitchell Plan and the dispatch of international monitors to oversee the reduction of violence. Uh, that's the most effective means, as is generally recognized. Uh, such efforts are routinely blocked by Washington. Again, this was vetoed in, on December 14th. Uh, that particular veto happened to be taking place during a 21-day uh, period of calm. Uh, that means that only one Israeli soldier was killed, along with 21 Palestinians, including 11 children, and 16 incursions into areas under Palestinian control. Ten days before the U.S. veto, uh, there was a conference in Geneva, important conference, uh, which the U.S. boycotted and therefore undermined, a uh, conference that once again concluded that the Fourth Geneva Convention applies to the occupied territories. Uh, that entails that virtually everything that the United States and Israel do there is a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions, meaning a war crime of unusual severity, grave breach uh, under U.S. law. The conference, which included the European Union, even Britain went along, specifically declared that the U.S.-funded Israeli settlements are illegal, and it condemned, I'm quoting it now, it condemned the practice of willful killing, torture, unlawful deportation, willful depriving of the rights of fair and regular trial, extensive destruction and appropriation of property, carried out unlawfully and wantonly. They're not talking about the last couple of weeks. This is December 5th. The United States is a high contracting party of the Geneva Conventions, and therefore it is obligated by solemn treaty to prosecute those who were responsible for such crimes, including uh, the U.S. leadership uh, going back 30 years. The United States has not officially withdrawn its recognition of the applicability of the Geneva Conventions to the occupied territories, nor has it withdrawn its official censure of Israeli violations as the occupying power, I'm quoting George Bush the first, uh, when he was UN ambassador in October, and that remains official policy. Uh, in October 2000, the Security Council reaffirmed the consensus on this matter. It called on Israel, I'm quoting, called on Israel, the occupying power, to abide scrupulously by its legal obligations under the Fourth Geneva Convention. Uh, remember, that excludes just about everything that's happening there as a war crime. Uh, the vote was 14 to 0 means it becomes international law. Uh, the zero is because of one abstention. Clinton abstained, uh, presumably not wanting to veto one of the core principles of international humanitarian law, particularly in the light of the circumstances uh, in which it was enacted. 
1949 uh, in order to criminalize uh, formally the atrocities of the Nazis in occupied territories. Well, all of this is another significant contribution to enhancing terror, all the more so because it's scarcely reported. The Geneva Conference, in fact, wasn't reported uh, and very quickly consigned to the memory hole, uh, which is already uh, amply furnished with our own uh, quickly forgotten crimes. Uh, the uh, 